Hello everyone and welcome to a new vlog. It's the start of the weekend here in Yorkshire and I'm really looking forward to this weekend. It is Mother's Day weekend in the UK and I'm spoiling my mum a little bit today. We don't actually like going out to eat on Mother's Day itself so I'm doing this part of the celebration a little bit early and I'm taking her out for lunch at a place that we've been dying to go to for so long. It's a lovely place pub in Yorkshire called The Star Inn near Helmsley and people have been telling us for years that this place is amazing but very sadly soon after we first moved to Yorkshire it actually had a fire and was closed for a really long time. I mean it's this sort of ancient pub with a thatched roof and everything so it was terrible that they had this awful fire but I think they've managed to restore everything really well. They're now open again and I'm just really excited to be taking my mum for a celebratory Mother's Day lunch there. I hope we'll have a fabulous time. Um, just before we set off though, I wanted to share some books that have arrived that I thought you might be interested in too. I'll also catch you up on what I've been reading as well, but we don't have too long before we have to head out for lunch, so I thought I'd just quickly first um, share some books that have arrived in the post. So, first up, uh, Penguin Press very kindly sent me a press copy of this book, Rural Hours, The Country Lives of Virginia Woolf, Sylvia Townsend Warner and Rosamund Lehman by Harriet Baker. They got in touch with me and asked me if I'd like this book and actually this was already one that I was really looking forward to coming out so I said yes please, that would be amazing. It sounds just my cup of tea and it really does sound so interesting. I like the little postcard with um, Virginia Woolf on it that they sent me. So it says, Rural Hours tells the story of three very different women, Virginia Woolf, Sylvia Townsend Warner and Rosamund Lehman, each of whom moved to the country and was forever changed by it. For all three, rural life began with personal disruption, ill health, a lover, a divorce. Each was stricken with anxiety about her work but invigorated by new landscapes and daily rhythms, they began to heal, to embark on experiments in form, in feeling and in living, to discover sexual and political awakening and above all, to embrace freedom. I can't wait to read this. I mean, I'm so interested in this topic, not only because I made a big life-changing move from the city to the countryside, and I have a creative career, um, but because I'm really interested in all three of these women writers, I really admire their work, and I can't wait to hear or to read more about this aspect of their lives and how the country and how the countryside inspired their work. So I'm really looking forward to this. And then um, this book, I was also so pleased to get. It's All Before Me, A Search for Belonging in Wordsworth's Lake District by Esther Rutter. I actually interviewed Esther Rutter a few years ago now about her first book, which I think was called This Golden Fleece. And it was a book all about Esther's discovery of how much she loved knitting and the different projects she knitted as she uncovered the history of knitting throughout Britain. And it was this lovely blend of um, history and craft and memoir. I really enjoyed the book and I'm excited to read her new book, which is about an earlier stage in her life, I believe, a sort of very early 20s, when she suffered some kind of breakdown um, I think when she was living abroad in Japan and she came back to the UK and she started working at the Wordsworth, ha the Wordsworth house in the Lake District. Um, so again it kind of fits this theme of healing and recovery occurring in the countryside through creative work and this connection between creativity and well-being and landscape so these two books actually fit 
a theme, which is interesting. And I absolutely adore the Lake District. Mum and I went to see Dorothy and, Will, uh, Dorothy and William Wordsworth's cottage. Um, I think it was last spring that we went, either last spring or the spring before, maybe it was two years ago. And we loved it, we really should go back this spring. And I just can't wait to, to read this book. This would be a good book to read before we go back. So very excited about this one. And then I have just had in the post today too, a couple new Girls Gone By books. You know, I take photos for their Instagram account and that's The White Riders and Over the Sea to School. I'm such a fan of Mabel Esther Allen's writing and this is a book I've never owned by her. A lot of her books are really rare and hard to find on the secondhand market. So Girls Gone By are republishing a lot of them and I'm excited about this one. It says, Dillian Harvey, captain of her form and perfectly contended with life at the local high school, likes things set and unchanging. Imagine her dismay when she learns when she learns she is to go to boarding school far away in the remote Isle of Skye. <laughs> um, that sounds like such a good setting. And I do like school stories, so I'm looking forward to this. Then The White Riders, I was really excited to get to. I love Monica Edwards' books. They're a real mix of family and pony and adventure stories for children. Um, I read these growing up. This has been the absolute hardest Girls Gone By edition of her books to find. So Girls Gone By previously republished all of Monica Edwards' Romney Marsh and Punchbowl Farm series. But they're republishing some of the rarest titles. And The White Riders is one of the absolute rarest. It was one of the last books that I managed to find to complete My Girls Gone By set. So it's so great that they're bringing it out again and it's now available to buy. This is one of my favorite of the Romney Marsh books too. It's so good. So that's wonderful news. And then a couple more books um, also have arrived. So I got this one, 12 Words for Moss by Elizabeth Jane Burnett. I have a previous book by her as well. And this one I think just came out last year, but I've picked it up with Spring in the Air. Um, I love Elizabeth Jane Burnett's blend of nature writing and poetry. And this is what this book um, really combines so beautifully too. So it says, Glow flake, rocket, small skies, kind spears, Marilyn. Moss is known as the living carpet, but if you look really closely, it contains its own irrepressible light. In 12 Words for Moss, Elizabeth Jane Burnett celebrates the unsung hero of the plant world with a unique blend of poetry, nature writing, and memoir. So I'm really looking forward to this. I've uh, read a few of the poems from it already and they're really lovely. And then this is a book that my mum ordered actually. I think she spotted it on Blackwells and I was surprised when it came because I didn't, I didn't know she'd ordered it. Um, but it sounds really interesting. They, they have the lovely independent, um, I don't know if it's the independent bookseller edition or just a special edition, but I think how amazing is that? And um, so this is by Professor Alice Roberts. It's called Crypt, Life, Death and Disease in the Middle Ages and Beyond. Mum's already started reading this and was telling me all of this fascinating information that she's already got from just reading the beginning. And it, I, I wasn't sure this would be my type of book, so I was surprised when it arrived. But when she told me more about it, it sounds really good. It says, um, we can unlock secrets from bones preserved for centuries in tombs, graves, and crypts. The history of the Middle Ages is typically the story of the rich and powerful. There's barely a written note for most people's lives. Archaeology represents another way of interrogating our history. By using cutting-edge science to examine human remains and burials, it is possible to unearth details about how individuals lived and died that give us a new understanding of the past 
one that is more intimate and inclusive than ever before. I think this is what I'm so interested in with this book is how much it combines history but this new way of being able to examine history by how far science has come. It's actually really exciting to read and learn more. Mum was telling me all about it because she's been reading it. And it's incredible what they can find out now through examining the bones and DNA and all this type of thing. It really is remarkable how much more we can learn um, about our past. And I, that is exciting. So. I was glad Mum had got this and I'm actually really looking forward to reading it too. So anyway, those are the books that have come lately, but I'm going to go and uh, cry and try and sort of get Mum to hurry up a little bit <laughs> as uh, we need to leave now. I'm always the one chevying her out the door. I'm always the one that's on time and she's always the one that's a little bit late. That's just been my whole childhood. So I'm gonna see if she's ready. Oh, but just before I do that, I'll actually share the Mother's Day card I got for her um, because this arrived too and this is from lamb little illustration you can find that on instagram um i really love her work and uh, i got a mother's day card and a little bookmark so this was the mother's day card i got which i'll, I'll wait and give this to mum on sunday um but i can show you because by the time this video goes up Mother's Day will be passed, so I got this, and um, this little bookmark, isn't that sweet? I really love her nature-inspired illustrations. Anyway, it's time that we were out the door, so I'll bring you along with us and show you a bit of our lunch. So here's Mum, we're, we're just about to go out the door, but I thought I'd show her outfit yes. because this was a Mother's Day gift, wasn't it? It was, it the was. The blouse. Lovely blouse, yes. I can't remember, who was it by again? Adina. Adina, yes. yes. It looks really nice on you. I like their, their stuff. I mean, they're always easy to wear and you always tell me to look out for them too. So you were yes. the first one that spotted them. Yes. And we were just lucky finding this and yeah. it just feels just right for, for a special lovely treat from you for Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. And you've got your sea salt trousers on. Absolutely. Which <laughs> we I both hope they're going to do lighter weight for spring as well because <laughs> these corduroy will eventually need to be Shelf. Yes, I know. I love that sort of wide, yes. wide leg that yes. was fashionable last year. Let's hope it still is. And you've got um, the earrings that I bought for you yes. in London one yes. year from Maggie Owen. Yes. You've got yes. those on and your pearls. I'm borrowing your pearls, actually. If <laughs> truth is known, these are actually Miranda's, but I've sort of taken them over, haven't I? They're well, they look really favorite. nice on you. They suit you. Those. No, you look lovely. Well, so do you, but we're just so excited about this. I've never been. It's obviously something I've always wanted to do, and I just couldn't believe it that you booked it and everything. Oh. It's wonderful. Thank you. And I thought I'd show you my outfit too, because I'm very predictably in a sea salt dress. You might remember actually I got this for my birthday last October, but it's having another lovely outing today. So here's the dress and let's go for lunch, I'm ready. Lovely. Here we've arrived at the Star Inn. Very excited for our lunch. I love the thatched roof. So charming.
we are in the garden at the Absolutely. Star Inn after a really fabulous lunch. <laughs> we were the last ones in there, the last ones standing. But oh, we had a marvelous time. It was. Oh, lovely. we really did. Thank you so much. Oh. It was so special. It so really won- was. Wonderful start wonderful. to the Mother's Day weekend. Wonderful food. Absolutely wonderful. We yeah, we couldn't recommend it highly enough. No. It was really, really special. Very wasn't special. It? Mm, mm. <laughs> I just everything. Everything was so unique and mm. tasty and just wow it was just amazing it, it was really lovely. was you know why they got their michelin star let's put it like that <laughs> yes. yeah yeah and the sunshine has come out so we're just enjoying a little wonder in their garden uh, with some of the march breezes blowing <laughs> yes it is <isn't> breezy <laughs> yeah. Still. But just enjoying a bit of fresh air and then we're going to head home yeah Good morning everyone. So it is now Friday morning. I've skipped forward quite a few days. This has been a bit of a manic week in some ways because I was feeling quite under the weather for a few days and that has meant that I've had a lot of work to try and catch up on and get through right at the end of the week and I'm sure I'll be working this weekend too. But later today, I'm really looking forward to heading to a secondhand book fair in Harrogate. Mum and I are going to go together. We've been to this book fair before, I think a couple of years ago, and found some good books when we last went. So I'm really looking forward to going today and hopefully finding a few good books. But I wanted to take some time this morning to just have a bit of a bookish catch up with you. Um, I want to share some of the books that I've read and I'm reading lately. So as you all know, I've been working my way through rereading all of the Anne of Green Gables books. I finished Anne of the Island, which I so enjoyed. I really love this one when Anne is at college and she just has a marvellous time. She makes friends with a lot of wonderful girlfriends. And something I'd remembered about this book is the amazing house, Patty's place, that Anne and some of her girlfriends live in while they're at university. And it's just such a charming sounding house. It's just the perfect little setup. I really love all of the descriptions of home in Ellen Montgomery's books, actually. That's something I'm really noticing on this reread because also in Anne of Windy Willows, which I'm currently reading, this is my sort of bedtime book at the moment, also in this one, when Anne is again away from Green Gables, away from Avonlea, um, she's been made principal of a school and she boards out in a home that, again, it just sounds sort of idyllic. The home is called Windy Willows or in the States it's Windy Poplars and that was the original title of this book. And Anne's bedroom just sounds incredible, the type that every young woman would dream of. Her bedroom is in this turret and she has lots of windows with lovely views and a little window seat. And she's got this huge and very high bed that she kind of has to climb into. Somehow the description of her bedroom reminds me of the bedroom in The Little White Horse, which I absolutely adored the sound of that bedroom. If you've read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. I think it's just the most incredible bedroom described in The Little White Horse, the the type that any little girl would want to have. But Anne's bedroom at Windy Willows comes pretty close, I have to say. And um, this is a great book if you like epistolary stories because there's lots and lots of letters in this one. Anne is always writing to Gilbert and so although not all of the book is told in letter form, a lot of it is. And I find that a really charming aspect of this story too. And that's just something I do really enjoy about um, this book. So yes, I'm really loving the series so far. It's it's so fun to return to them and I do enjoy seeing Anne getting older. I think the books do become a bit more episodic as they go on. Although Anne is still a central figure 
there are so many other characters that come into play and have their own little stories unfolding in the novels and I actually like that, I like the range of characters, I like learning about all their lives and there's often a lot of humour told with their stories as well and Anne is always helping people or getting herself into scrapes still sometimes um, but she's not, even though she's a central character the narrative shifts a bit from only her preoccupations and her story and you get lots of other stories of other characters as well in these books. Um, I still do enjoy that though. I think I even prefer Anne of the Island and Anne of Windy Willows to Anne of Avonlea. Um, I think that one's my least favourite so far, at least on this reread, which is interesting. But they are different from Anne of Green Gables in that it's not Anne's story that is so, so central to the plot in these later books. So that's interesting to compare as well to the very first book. And that's part of what makes that first book so special. I also miss Marilla a bit. You don't get Marilla anywhere near as much as I would like in the later books. Um, Though you do still hear quite a bit about Mrs. Lind, and I do like Rachel Lind too, so that's fun. But yes, I'm just really enjoying this read through, and hopefully, I'll have read all of them by the time it's the Comfort Book Club discussion in April. You can see I'm <laughs> planning ahead here because I'm hoping to have read all of the Anne books before I yet again reread Anne of Green Gables in April. So that's all going really well. And then, of course, I adored rereading The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets in February for the Comfort Book Club. And like I said in the book club discussion video, it made me want to read more of Eva Rice's books, which I hadn't really done, and I don't know why. So I'm now reading her most recently published book, This Could Be Everything. And this is set in the sort of late 1980s, very early 1990s and it's about um, a young girl who's transitioning from girlhood into womanhood, she's about 19 years old and she's had to, co she's had to cope with really an, an unbelievable amount of tragedy in her life and she's reeling from her most recent loss um, which was the death of her twin sister and at the start of the book She's just in an awful state of grief. Um, she's become frightened of going outdoors or interacting with the world in any way. And she's just kind of completely closed down as just a way of trying to handle all of the grief that she's feeling. But then this is about a summer when she starts to find hope again in her life and she makes a friend, she falls in love, things begin to happen to her again and I am enjoying it so far. It's very very different from The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets apart from some central sort of themes and motifs that like music is really really important in this book just as it is in The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets and again it's also a, a coming of age story. So I'm finding it really interesting to read this having just read The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets. Um, this would be a good summer read as well, it's kind of set over a hot summer in London. Another aspect of the book that I'm enjoying is that it's set in Notting Hill and it's just this amazing description of Notting Hill at this time in London. So I really am enjoying the sense of place that you get as well from this story. It's much darker than The Lost Art of Keeping Secrets, but I think as I read through the book, um, there'll be more of a sense of optimism and hope that comes, which is really touching. So yes, I'm looking forward to finishing that one. And then um, I, I wanted to show you um, two books that I got mum for Mother's Day, um, which I have of course been enjoying dipping into as well. And that's The Book of Wildflowers um, by Angie Lewin and Christopher Stocks, which is such a gorgeous book. 
if you know, I think it is called the Book of Pebbles that, um, that that was done previous to this, and that's a really lovely book, but I was even more excited about one about wildflowers, and it's so beautifully illustrated. I love Angie Lewin's art, um, she's so talented, so it's just glorious to flick through these books, but I love the essays about the different wildflowers. It was even interesting reading the introduction about what actually even is a wildflower. How do you define what a wildflower is? I really enjoyed that. So yes, this has just been a real joy and mum loves it as well, of course, which is really good. And then as we're both huge Georgette Hare fans, I'd got this book for mum, the new one by Jennifer Kloster, The Novels of Georgette Hare, A Celebration. And mum's mainly been reading this one. I haven't really had a chance to get this one off her yet, but I am looking forward to getting to it. And yeah, she's been really liking it. She told me it's especially fascinating to read about some of the Georgette Hare novels that she wrote that were just sort of contemporary. They weren't her mysteries, they weren't her Regency romances. And she never wanted these books republished and there's just not so much information about them. So she's been finding that really interesting to read about in this book. But I think this is great for any Georgette Hare fan because it's fascinating how she really does go through book by book pretty much. Um, the mysteries and all of the Regency romances. I'm really looking forward to having a proper look at this. I like how she gives, for instance, um, information on what Georgette Hare herself thought about some of the books. So like under Friday's Child, um, this is listed as Georgette Hare's personal favorite, for instance. And there's just, I mean, the amount of research that must have gone into this is really astounding. I'm so impressed. Um, so I love that you get this really in-depth look at the books and the context in which they were written, um, the context of Georgia Hare's life itself when she was writing too and her thoughts on the book and kind of lots of information surrounding the publication and writing process and her own opinions. So yes, I'm really looking forward to reading this one. <laughs> more myself, but I think mum will be hanging on to that <laughs> for a little while more. And then what I want to start this weekend, and I'm hoping to be able to do some solid reading. Um, I really hope this weekend, I've been so busy lately that it's really been hard, but I do want to start the biography of um, Frances Hodgson Burnett. I obviously also need to read The Secret Garden before the Comfort Book Club discussion at the end of the month. So I also have to read that. And I hope to read the uh, biography. And then another book that I am hoping to start as well is Family Roundabout by Richmond Crompton. And people who are part of the Seasons of Story community will be finding out soon why, why I'm reading this. Um, so yes, it's a busy few days of reading ahead, hopefully, but I'm really loving all of the books that I'm reading at the moment and also want to be reading. So that's great. But I better actually get going as we should head off to Harrogate now, hopefully find some good books. Um, you'll never, you, d you never know what to expect. Some years it's good, some years it really isn't. And that's part of the excitement, which I'm sure all of you will understand as book buyers. It's so exciting to go somewhere like a book fair when you don't know what there will be, but there's always this hope that you'll find some gem that you've been looking for. So yes, we'll, we'll just have to see what there is, but I'm looking forward to it. I think mum has made some sandwiches for us to just have in the car um, so we can, well, I think we'll just eat those when we get there and then we'll whip around and then head back because I have a Zoom call to be on um, for this afternoon. 
So yes, better get going and head to the Harrogate Book Fair. So here we are at the Harrogate Book Fair, looking forward to seeing what there might be. Yeah, it's always excited. like a treasure I know, hunt, isn't I know, it? it is, I love it. Yeah, yeah. and if certain sellers are going to be there that you like to see their, their wares. I'm yes. not, we didn't really have time to have a good look, but I know that we have a few there that we've bought yes, from before. Yes, exactly, so. so it will be yeah. fun to see yeah. who's there, mm -hmm. and we've been once before, haven't we? Yes, yes, to this one we have, yeah. Yeah, um, so we're looking forward yeah. to it, and we'll we'll see what we find. <laughs> Okay, we're back from the Harrogate Book Fair, which was a lot of fun, and I wanted to show you what we found there. Definitely found some books I'm really pleased with, which is wonderful, and I thought I'd just show you quickly before I have to hop on a Zoom call this afternoon. So, um, first up is this one, The White Gate by Mary Ellen Chase. I was really pleased to pick this one up. I do have another book by Mary Ellen Chase, and she's an author I've kind of been looking out for a little bit. I know Miss Reed was a fan of her work, she dedicated a book to her, and this is one I've really been looking for because it's illustrated by Shirley Hughes, who's one of my favourite illustrators, and there's some really charming ones um, in this book. You can see each chapter is headed by a Shirley Hughes illustration. And I just think they're so charming. This sounds like it will be a really fascinating read too. Um, it says that Mary Helen Chase has written charmingly and with great sensibility about her childhood at the end of the last century in Maine. The white gate from which the title is taken stood at the bottom of the driveway to the house in which the author lived as a little girl. It was, in a sense, the pivot of her world. On the one side lay the garden, her home and family. On the other side, the road ran downhill toward the village and the sea and uphill toward the sky. The white gate divided the world into the security of the familiar and the excitement of the unknown. So I do enjoy this type of childhood memoir often. So I'm hoping this will be a really good book. And I'm also intrigued to read about Maine at that time, a real sort of bygone world now. And yes, I'm really hoping that I enjoy this. And then um, I found a Patricia Wentworth with a really beautiful cover. I just loved this edition. I have read this one before, but not for a little while. So I'm looking forward to getting to it. It's The Silent Pool by Patricia Wentworth. And I just, yeah, really loved that cover. So I haven't seen a lot of secondhand um, Patricia Wentworths of the old sort of vintage books. So I was really thrilled with that. Some children's books I picked up. I really love this old penguin. I think this is the old puffin. I think this is the first puffin edition of Thimble, Sum Thimble Summer by Elizabeth Enright. And I love the cover on it. This is a real American classic. I loved this book when I read it when I was young. It's a great summer read as well. So I was just happy. You know I collect old puffins. So I was really thrilled to add this one to my collection as it is a favourite story. And then I found a lovely edition of Grey Rabbit's May Day by Alison Utley. I also like to collect these, not too seriously, I especially look for the old Grey Rabbit books that are more seasonally based or in some way to do with the seasons. Um, so I was really pleased to find Grey Rabbit's May Day and it's in really good shape too with a lovely dust wrapper. So I was thrilled about that. Then I picked up The Bells of Rome by Mabel Esther Allen. Not in such good shape this one, it's like an ex-library copy, but um, it was very reasonable and I do love Mabel Esther Allen. She um, wrote a lot of children's books, but a lot of what are now cast as YA books. Um, 
The, the sorts of books are quite good to read just before you move on to Mary Stuart. You know, a lot of them feature young female heroines who go off um, somewhere abroad and have an adventure and have their first love as well. Um, so this one sounds like it will be in that kind of style and I'm looking forward to getting to this at some point, The Bells of Rome. And then I found um, this book book, a heftier one, The Tulip by Anna Pavold, and this is one I've been looking at for quite a long time, but it was very expensive new, and so I was really thrilled to find one second hand um, that was just a really, really good price, so a real bargain, and it really is still in very nice shape. And it's just such a beautiful book, this one. So fascinating looking as well. And I just love all of the illustrations in it too. And I mean, the tulip certainly has an incredible history to it. So I'm just really thrilled to have such a beautiful book. And I hadn't been buying it because it was very pricey. Um, so I was just really, really pleased to find it second hand and to pick it up and yeah it's still in really nice shape so I was very happy about that so yes um really successful time at the Har Harrogate book fair I'm sorry I couldn't film very much while I was in there but it's very hard to film in those sorts of situations and it was actually really really busy um so it was just, yeah, I just couldn't really film very much at all in there. But I do recommend the book fair if you're ever in the area. Okay, so I'm going to end this vlog here now. Thank you so much for watching. Extra big thanks to those of you who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. I so appreciate your support. And of course, I appreciate the support of everyone who watches my videos and likes them and comments on them and subscribes to my channel or who also supports my work by joining one of my communities like seasons of story um, it all means so much to me i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you've had a wonderful week and weekend and i'll see you again next sunday goodbye